what I want to talk about for a minute is uh, from the book of Psalms. From the book of Psalms, I want to talk a little bit about some stuff that's, you know, you got to stay in the Word. That's the bottom line. No matter what nobody says to you about somebody else, all of that is not important. What's important is staying in the Word of God. That's what's important. Praise the Lord. That's what's important. Staying in the Word of God. Staying in the Word of God. You may not like me. And when you get stronger in the Lord, you'll find out how foolish that is. It's not to like somebody because they say something that you don't like. Especially when it's according to the Word of the Lord. Um, I saw a couple of things in the book of Psalms that caught my interest. So I'm going to share that with you. And uh, hopefully that you get something out of it just as well as I get something. Psalm chapter 10. Why are you so far away, O Lord? Why do you hide yourself when we are in trouble? That's what a lot of people feel that are with the Lord. But you better make sure that you're with the Lord when you have that attitude. The scripture goes on to say, The wicked are proud and they persecute the poor. Catch them in the trap they have made. Catch the wicked in the trap they have made. The wicked man is proud of his evil desires. The greedy man curses and rejects the Lord. A wicked man does not care about the Lord. In his pride, he thinks that God doesn't matter. A wicked man succeeds in everything. He cannot understand God's judgment. He sneers at his enemies. He says to himself, I will never fail. See, that's like Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25, and Proverbs 14 and 12. That says, there's a way that seems right unto man. See, when, when we outside of God, the way the system is set up, the educational system, the money system, the pimping, prostituting game, I, I'm, I'm not talking about on no low level either. I'm talking about even in people in high society. Pimping and prostituting is all over the world. Wives, I don't care how poor wife is or poor, uh, what was I going to say? How high class a wife is or how poor wife is. Many women are treated like prostitutes and they act like prostitutes because they only got with the man a lot of times on their own whim. They only allow that man to choose them, which the woman chose the man. That's because the man had money. That's prostitution in disguise. They didn't love the man because of the man, who the man was, or his character. Money talks. And you know what they say. Money talks and everything else walks. I'm not saying that there are not some good men out there that are not buying women. And I'm not saying that there are not some women out there that are not being bought. As you know, every woman, even the liars, will say, I have my own job, I do my own thing. Okay, if that's true, that's one thing. <sighs> anyway, it's, it's a complicated, it's complicated. So we got to try to stay, that's why we try to stay with the Word of God, because it's so complicated with human beings, because whether it's a righteous human being or unrighteous human being, human beings are human beings, and a lot of them think the same way and to some degree. The difference between the righteous is they think righteous, and the difference between the wicked is they think wicked, but the wicked also have some righteousness in them, and the righteous also have some wickedness in them. So sometimes it's hard for you to tell the difference between the two unless you make up your mind to come to the Lord and stay with the Word. And that helps you recognize the wickedness in you as an individual, even though you may be trying to live righteous. Praise the Lord. A wicked man succeeds in everything. He cannot understand God's judgment. When it says that he succeeds in everything, it's talking about in the world. It's not talking about going to heaven now. It's talking about in the world. Because the world is for the wicked. The devil is the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. The, uh, the wicked sneer at his enemies, which would basically would be the righteous. He said to himself, I will never fail. I will never be in trouble. I've heard people say that right while they're on their way to jail. I heard people say they don't need nobody right while they're on their way to jail and don't have a dollar. They've spent it all splurging and need the same people that they don't talk about. His speech is filled with curses. 
lies, and threats. He is quick to speak hateful, evil words. The wicked, that is. The wicked hides himself in the villages, waiting to murder innocent people. Well, that almost sounds like the sewer that tells them to hide and wait in sewer chapter 9, verse 5, and sewer chapter 9, verse 29. Wow. He spies on his helpless victim. He awaits in his hiding place like a lion. He lies and wait for the poor. We're talking about the wicked. The wicked catches the poor in his trap and drags them away like a lion. Just using them. The helpless victims lie crushed. Brute strength has defeated them. The wicked man says to himself, God doesn't care. He has closed his eyes and will never see me. Wow. We think we're getting away with what we're doing, but we haven't read the Revelation chapter 20, have we? That tells us that it's coming up again, that we're going to be judged for all the things that we do. O oh Lord, punish those wicked men. Remember those who are suffering. How can a wicked man despise God and say to himself, he will not punish me? But they do say that. But you do see. You take notice of trouble and suffering and are always ready to help the helpless man. Because the helpless man commits himself to you. Like Luke chapter 16. The poor man had to be trusting in God. He didn't go to heaven because he was poor. If that's all it took for us to go to heaven, then a lot of people would be on their way to heaven now because they, they sure enough poor. But you're not going to heaven just because you're poor. But many times the poor, because they have tried to trust the system, and the system has nothing for them unless they become like the system. And some people, it's not in them to be wicked. It's not in them to be wicked like that. O Lord, punish those wicked men. Remember those who are suffering. How can a wicked man despise God and say to himself, God will not punish me? But you do see, God, and you take notice of trouble and suffering and are always ready to help. The helpless man commits himself to you. You have always helped the need. So this is what basically what it's primarily saying to you in Psalm chapter 10. There is wicked and there are righteous. But you've got to keep on seeking the Lord. Don't, because the Lord didn't seem like he came to you right away. Don't throw in the towel and give up on God and become wicked. Or just give up and commit suicide. Or, or suicide through smoking cigarettes and getting cancer. Or, or eating the wrong stuff. Or doing the wrong things and go to hell. Don't do that to yourself. Try to hold on. I know that it's hard. But that's what prayer is all about. Talking to God and asking God to give you strength. God, please give me strength. He that has, lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Not the wisdom of the world. You need the wisdom of God from above to even deal with this wickedness of the wisdom of the world. Because the wisdom of the world is wicked. Break the power of the wicked and evil men. Punish them for the wrong they have done. The Lord is king forever and ever. Those who worship other gods will vanish from his land. You will listen, O Lord, to the prayer of the lowly. You will give them courage. You will hear the cries of the oppressed and the orphans. Some of you might feel like you're motherless, you're fatherless. No one is on your side. So you, you join forces with gangs and people that are wicked, cursing. So that looks strong in you. When we look at the TV, we see the wicked look so strong. But wickedness is really weak. It's strong, demonically strong. Just like when I talk about the Jezebel. The Jezebel is a strong, vicious, wicked woman. Whether they're using the word of God or not, they're using it wickedly. They're not using it righteously because God doesn't have wicked women on his team. He saves wicked women and causes them to be righteous and soft and tender-hearted, merciful. Same with men. You will listen, O Lord, to the prayers of the lowly. You will give them courage. You will hear the cries of the oppressed. So that means we have to cry unto the Lord. And you will judge in their favor. So that mortal men may cause terror no more. No matter how evil man seems to be. You know, humanity. Because women are just as evil as men are today. 
you must know that God is the power. It may not look like it, but God is the power. God is the power over all power. Satan is powerful. Oh, God has given this world to Satan. Understand that. You, ask, you say, why is the world so wicked? Why do good men get with bad women? Why do good women get with bad men? Because we're living in a wicked world. It's hard to tell because some wicked people seem to be good. And we get deceived. We get tricked. And if you if you hungry and thirsty, any food may look good to you when you're hungry and thirsty. Whatever uh, the taste buds require, if it's love, lust can look like love. Life can look like love. Infatuation can look like love. Hatefulness can come in this disguise and look like love. You don't know. So you pray to God for wisdom. You pray to God to keep you out of the trenches of Satan, out of the traps. And if the traps which they are set, you ask God to help you to get out of the traps, step past the, the traps, get away from the traps, and escape from the traps of evil humanity, evil Satan. That was basically all of Psalm chapter 10. Let's go to Psalm chapter 11. I trust in the Lord for safety. How foolish, foolish it is for you to say to me, fly away like a bird to the mountain. Because the wicked have drawn their bows and aimed their arrows to shoot from the shadows at good men. I'm supposed to run away and not talk about the Lord because the majority are wicked. I'm supposed to be afraid because the majority are wicked and the, the wicked band together to uh, to pounce on like wild beasts on the land uh, because they all want to attack you. But I trust in the Lord for safety. So it's foolish of you to say to me, stop what I'm doing, stop talking about the Lord. I will stop, but not because you say so. I will stop, but not because you tried to come against me. I will stop when the message inside me says it's enough. Praise the Lord. There's nothing a good man can do when everything falls apart except pray. The Lord is in his holy temple. He has his throne in heaven. He watch, watches people everywhere and knows what they are doing. You think the police department can watch you, whatever town, state, country that you're in. Some police departments and law enforcement agencies have a whole setup where they're watching the whole town right from their office. They know when you get a cup of coffee. They know when you go here. They know when you go there. They're watching your every move. They watch your car when it leaves. They watch your car when it goes here, there. All across, they watch you wherever they want to go. And if they can watch you and this man, what do you think God can do? The Lord is in his holy temple. He has his throne in heaven. He watches people everywhere and knows what they are doing. He examines the good and the wicked alike. We all go through an examination. He tests them. The lawless he hates with all his heart. God, God hates sin and he hates people that, that are wicked towards other people. Just because God lets you get by, you didn't get away. Let me say that again. Just because you may get by, you didn't get away. You know, just like your mother and father used to let you get by with a spanking, but then when they catch you and spank you or your grandfather, grandmother, and they say, now this is for old and new, for the stuff that you thought you got away with. That's how God does it. That's how the prison system do it. They watch you. When you're on secret indictment or when you're on secret and surveillance, the, all your indictments go against you in court. And they get you for stuff that you didn't even know they saw you do. He sends down flaming coal and burning sulfur on the wicked. Isn't that what God did in Genesis chapter 19 to the homosexuals? We're not just singling out homosexuals. Because they can get saved too. In Genesis 19, though, before he sent the coal. Now he is talking about Sinners, not just homosexuals, says he sends down flaming coals and burning sulfur on the wicked. The wicked includes everyone that's wicked. Everyone. I just use the example 
that he first did it according to the scriptures in Genesis chapter 19 to the homosexual. But now it's coming down on all the way. He punishes them to, he, he punishes them with scorching winds. The Lord is righteous and loves good deeds. Those who do them will live in his presence. Now understand this. It's not just because of good deeds. It's good deeds because you believe in the Christ. Once you believe in the Christ, you start doing good deeds. Don't do good deeds and don't believe in the Christ. God's only begotten son. If you don't believe in God's only begotten son, and you're just doing good deeds, you're wasting your time. But if you come to Christ and get baptized in the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus, and then you come up out of the water and you start doing good deeds, you say, I'm doing it because Christ died for me and rose for me. He resurrected for me. He lived for me. He died for me and he rose again and he's sitting on God's throne talking to God for me. He's my lawyer. That's what Christ is. He's your lawyer. So that's why you're doing good deeds because you accept Christ as your lawyer. That's putting it in layman terms. If you can't get that, you won't get it. That's all of Psalm 11. Now let's go to Psalm 12. A prayer for help. Help us, O Lord. There is no good man left. Wow. There's not a good man left. Honest men, men can no longer be found. Wow. Do women feel this way? Do we feel this way about women? No good man, no good woman is found no more. Somebody better put some goodness back into the world by calling on the name of Jesus and converting. Converting, meaning changing over, altering your lifestyle from wickedness. It's too easy to be wicked. It's too easy to be a liar, a killer, an extortioner, a cursor. Where, where are the righteous men and women? Where are you at? Are you going to try to come up out of wickedness? Or are you just going to be happy at being a wickedness because everybody is wicked? Is that what you want to use for excuse before God? Silence those flattering tongues, O Lord. Close those boastful mouths that say, with our words we get what we want. We will say what we wish. And no one can stop us. Have you ever dealt with people that say, there's no God. I'm my own God. God didn't do anything. I did it. Well, maybe I'm counted as the stupid or the ignorant. Because I see God and I see devil. I see God in goodness and I see devil in evil. And if I was the only one in control, I would never have, have ever had to say, that shouldn't have happened. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Or that was an accident. Because if I was in control, then it wouldn't have been an accident. I wouldn't have said, I apologize, or I'm sorry, or I didn't mean that. Or I wouldn't have failed, or I wouldn't have, you know, gotten to fights or nothing like that. Or I would have won them more because I would have chose, uh, I would have chose every fight, every battle. We will say what we wish and no one can stop us. That's what the wicked say. But now I will come, says the Lord, because the needy are oppressed and the persecuted groan in pain. I will give them the security they long for. See, when you're longing for God, you have to keep on praying to God. Don't give up praying. Don't give up praying. That's basically what the Psalms is about. Praising the Lord and praying to the Lord. Praising the Lord, thanking the Lord. And talking to the Lord, talking to the Lord, asking the Lord for help. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. And if you can't get, all right, if you get tired, who else are you going to go to? Who? The promises of the Lord can be trusted. They are as genuine as silver, refined seven times in the furnace. In other words, God's trust is greater than anything. You can trust what God promises. God promises to fill with the Holy Ghost. We talked about the Holy Ghost according to Acts chapter 2 verses 33 to 38. It's the promise of God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 10 verses 44 to 48. Acts chapter 19 verses 1 to 5. Luke Mark chapter 16 verse 17. John chapter 7 verse 38 39. God promised to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And His promises can be trusted. Because they are genuine as silver refined seven times in the furnace. In other words, that's real silver. Real gold. The streets are paved with gold and the pearly gates of God in the, in, in the heaven. You can't get gold like that. It said the gold was like clear as 
is crystal. And that's gold. That's white gold. Wicked men are everywhere. And everyone praises what is evil. Keep us always safe, O oh Lord. And preserve us from such people. What people? The wicked. The wicked. That's all of 12. Now let's since 13 is short. Let's go into 13. A prayer for help. How much longer will you forget me, Lord? Forever? How much longer will you hide yourself from me? How long must I endure trouble? How long will I sorrow? Will sorrow fill my heart day and night? How long will my enemies triumph under me? Sometimes it looks like you're going through and 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 it looks like God is not there. You almost want to throw in the towel because you're like, God's not. God is there. Don't you dare give up on God. It's a test. I think it's 42 chapters in the book of Job, but if you learn anything about Job, people say, I have the patience of Job. Well, if you have the patience of Job, you won't give up on God. But 38 of those chapters Job was going through because Satan was coming against him to make him turn away from God and cut God to his face. So the fact that the very thing that Satan said to God was, I will make Job curse you to your face if you take the protection from him. And you heard Job's wife say to Job, why don't you curse God and die? Those were the words of Satan. Seems like Satan entered her. So Satan can enter your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your father, your mother, your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, your friend, your neighbor. Satan could enter anybody and talk to you. Curse God and die. Give up on God. It may not be the same words, but they mean the same thing. Give up on God. Why are you serving God? Why are you trusting God? Why are you believing God? Yeah, it's a waste of time. No, it's not. Don't you dare give up on God. Don't you dare. Don't let my enemies say we have defeated him or her. Don't let them gloat over my downfall. God, I rely on your constant love. I will be glad because you will rescue me. I will sing to you, O Lord, because you have been good to me. Amen. Like that song says, I will hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Through hard trials I hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. I'm going to build my hopes of things eternal. I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hand. I'm really hurt for some of the people, some of the people that called me on the phone. I don't always have a magic answer, but then maybe I do have a magic answer, and that's God in the name of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. But as a human being, I'm finite, but God is infinite. I'm mortal, but God is immortal. I must decrease, but God must increase. I'm limited. But God is unlimited. And it hurts to see men and women hurting. And relationships have hurt a lot of people. Men and women. Men and women who have been married before. Or have been committed to a boyfriend or girlfriend. And thought that was going to be the girl of their life. The man of their life. And he or she walked away. Or... Even if they did something to cause him or her to walk away, you would have thought that the love would have been strong enough to hold him or hold her. But it did. And that messes people's lives up for years to come. If not hours to come, days to come, weeks to come, months to come, some as years to come. Even though that person is out of the life, that man and that woman is gone, on with other men, other women, or another man, another woman, or I've done had several. They may still be heard over that particular man, particular woman. Lord, help us. Satan doesn't care how he comes. He just comes to destroy you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, you don't have to be destroyed. So, in this word that I'm sharing with you is, hold on to the word of God. I'm not asking you to hold on to what I'm saying outside of the word of God. I'm told... Telling you to hold on to the word of God. 
Can you do that? Can you hold on to the word of God? Can you trust God? Can you trust God? Do you believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and gave his son for you? Can you believe that? Can you accept that? Praise the Lord. It's for you. It's for you. Uh, people are trying to get rid of the word of God and come up with some false words. Go to 1 Timothy. What does 1 Timothy say in the 4th chapter? And then 2 Timothy in the 4th chapter says primarily the same thing in both chapters. And, unless, and I, I say it a lot because it's very prevalent for this time. And what does it say? Well, let's try to find it. It's not in this book. This book is torn out. Yeah. Basically what it does say in those chapters is that people will walk away from the faith like John 6 and 66, 666. John chapter 6 verse 66, 666. They walked away from the Lord. When they found out that things weren't going their way, they walked away from the Lord. It's not about your way. It's about the Lord's way. It's not about what you say. It's about what the Lord says. Praise the Lord. And you may not, you know, you may have a problem with the Lord. Why are you having a problem with the Lord? You may have a problem with the Lord because you are disobedient. But uh, you can make it with the Lord if you want to. He will help you. He will. Let's listen to, I'm just jumping into a scripture right now. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 23. The, the, the sovereign Lord said, you are doomed, doomed. You did all. And this is the prophet Ezekiel speaking what the Lord said. The, the, the Lord said, you are doomed. See, a lot of y'all want to hear a message. You say it's a message. Of, you talk about love. You don't know what love is. When somebody tells you about your, your wickedness and telling you to come to Christ, that's the love. You want, to, you want somebody to pat you on your head and tell you you're doing right while you're in false religions, doing what you want, talking against America, but you you, you enjoying America's freedom. If you wasn't in America, if you wasn't in the United States, you talk down on the United States, you join religions against the United States, but you ain't move out of the United States because you enjoying the United States freedom to let you say what you say and do what you do. You hypocrite. You hypocrite. You low down hypocrite. You talk against the United States, but you use the United States. If you wasn't in the United States doing what you're doing somewhere else, you've been dead. The sovereign law said you are doomed. Doomed. You did all that evil. And then, by the side of every road, you build places to worship idols and practice prostitution. You dragged your beauty through the mud. You offered yourself to everyone who came by. And you were more of a prostitute every day. You let your lustful neighbors, the and, and this is the Egyptians, go to bed with you and you use your prostitution to make me angry. Now I have raised my hand to punish you and take away your share of my blessings. I have handed you over to the Philistines who hate you and are disgusted with your immoral actions. Because you were not satisfied by the others, you went running after the Syrians. You were their prostitute. But they didn't satisfy you either. You were also a prostitute for the Babylonians, that nation of bush biz businessmen. But they didn't satisfy you either. Here's a, a group of people that God called. So let's take yourself and put yourself in the place of Israel. No matter where God put you, you're not satisfied. The world that you're living in is this pair of sneakers, this pair of shoes, this pair of pants, this dress, this hat, this style, this furniture, this 
this uh, curtain, this couch. Always change it if you can because you're greedy. You're never satisfied. Never. You're like that in relationship. That's why you argue. You can't stay with a man. can't stay with a woman because you're never satisfied. You're greedy. You're prostitute. Men and women, whores and whoremongers, oh, you get mad. If you don't, if this don't fit you, then don't get angry. But the, the Lord, this is the word of the Lord. Go to your book, Ezekiel 16 and 23. You think we're different than they were then? We're worse because there's more clothes, more cars. There weren't even no cars then. They were horse and bucky now. So you're even more greedy now. God says, now I've raised my hand to punish you and take away your share of my blessings. I have handed you over to your enemies. This is what the sovereign Lord is saying. You have done all this like a shameless prostitute. Shameless. Like a woman getting online talking against me in the word of God. But you ain't doing what the word of God said. Just running your mouth. Jezebel, run your mouth. Shameless. Shameless. And they think that's strong. Look up, Jezebel. Shameless, vicious woman. Shameless, vicious, wicked woman. So of course they're going to run their mouth and keep talking. Because the Jezebel followers, the men that are under that lust, just looking for the beauty of a body, or not even the beauty of the body, the beauty of lust. The satisfaction, quenching their thirst and their appetite on lust. You have done all this like a shameless prostitute. On every street you build places to worship idols and practice prostitution. But you are not out for money like a common prostitute. You are like a woman who commits adultery with strangers instead of loving her husband. Wow. A prostitute is paid. But you give presents to all your lovers and bribe them to come from everywhere to sleep with you. You are a special kind of prostitute. No one forced you to become one. You didn't get paid. You paid them. Yes, you're different. Wow. So prostitution, God is saying, is wrong either way. Whether you were forced into it, whether you chose it to get paid. And then he says there's some prostitutes that just prostitute. Because there are women and men that he, he, when you use your body looseless, you're a prostitute, man or woman. Whoremonger is called a man. Whore is called a woman. And you're not always getting money. You think that you're beautiful, so you're a whore. You think that you're handsome, so you're a whoremonger. Every, you think that you're just building notches up, oh, the women love me, so you just practice being a whoremonger. Oh, the men just love me. So you practice being, oh, I know lust is hard. It's an addiction, just like drugs. Yeah, it is. Once you start having sex, it's hard. Once you enjoy it, the, the, the second you start enjoying it, you forget about the pain. You forget about the discomfort. You forget about the, 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 the whatever, whatever, the discomfort. We'll just leave it there, the discomfort, the pain. But once you feel any comfort, that addiction draws you back. So if you're not dedicated to one man or one woman, what do you become? A whoremonger. A whore. A prostitute. A man. A male prostitute. A female prostitute. And you think God is not looking at you? Remember the Psalms that we read before that. Yeah, God is watching. He got his eyes on you. Watch what God says in the 35th verse of Ezekiel 16. Now then, Jerusalem, watch what he says. You whore. You wonder why when I use the word whore, some of you say, I'm, I'm using biblical words. Where did you get your words? From the devil? I'm talking from the Bible. But you talking from the word, world. You don't get upset when you say uh, prostitute or whore or you use the word bitch or whatever. Those are the words you say. But if I use the Bible words, you want to condemn me. But whose word is going to stand? God's word, your word, or the devil's word? I am assure you God's word will stand. This is what the Lord says. You stripped off your clothes. And like a prostitute, you gave yourself to your lovers. And to all your disgusting idols. 
and you killed your children as sacrifices to idols. You wonder why some of these children are killing and murdering? Their parents were no good. Sorry to say it. Some of them are, some of them ain't. Some of their grandparents were no good. Some of their great grandparents. This is what you left. This is the legacy you left. You was you left out God. You talked against God. You didn't want no God. You didn't want no religion. Church was too much for you. I ain't want to go to church. I'm not going to make my children go to church. So now your children got guns in their hands. Now your children have dope in their hands. Now your children have knives in their hands. They don't have a Bible in their hands. They have knives, guns, and dope. Murder. Because you thought it was too, too strict. Because you couldn't go out and party and hang out in Babylon. Because your parents tried to be strict on you. So you run, run away and be rebellious. And now your children are rebellious. Some of you are the results of rebellious parents. Rebellious sons and daughters. And look at you. You haven't come to Christ yet. Those of you that have come to Christ. Do all you can to stay with Christ. And try to draw somebody else to Christ. And if you're weak in Christ. You can become strong in Christ. You stripped off your clothes. And like a prostitute. You gave yourself to your lovers. And to all your disgusting idols. And you killed your children as sacrifices to idols. Because of this I will bring all your former lovers together. The ones you liked and the ones you hated. I will bring them around you in a circle. And then I will strip off your clothes and let them see you naked. I will condemn you for adultery. I will condemn you for murder. And in my anger and fury I will punish you with death. I will put you in their power. And they will tear down the places where you engage in prostitution and worship idols. They will take away your clothes and jewels and leave you completely naked. In other words, you get robbed by the very lifestyle that you thought was putting clothes on you. And that same lifestyle will bring you down. You ever see how some people have a whole lot of money and all of a sudden they end up in pri prison and the, the narcs, the cops, people, the government come and take away thousands of dollars that they could have gave to their mothers or fathers or grandmothers or to the children, put it in the bank in somebody else's name. But they were so greedy, so busy trying to pop bottles, so busy trying to go to the big time mansion parties and prostitute around on a higher level than the level they were already prostituting on and they lose everything. In Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 44 it says like mother like daughter. The mother detested her daughter and her children and you are like your sisters who hated their husbands and their children. You and your sisters cities had a Hittite mother and an Amorite father. Oh, well, you all was mixed up from the door so you got mixed up children who have mixed up children who have mixed up children. And the only way to break the curse is for us to come back to the Lord. The Sovereign Lord says in Ezekiel ch verse 59, chapter 16, verse 59, the, so the Lord said, I will treat you the way you deserve because you ignored your promises and broke the covenant. But I will honor the covenant I made with you when you were young and I will make a covenant with you that will last forever. You will remember how you have acted and be ashamed of it when you get your when you get your what when you get your older sister and y your younger sister back I will let them be like daughters to you even though this was not part of my covenant with you I will renew my covenant with you and you will know that I am the Lord I will forgive all the wrongs you have done but you will remember them and be too ashamed to open your mouth that's what God wants you God is looking for humility like Second Chronicles 7.14 to my people. If you feel that God has ever been in your life and you've been a backslider. If God has ever been in your family life and you feel you're cursed because you're not following the Lord. You can come to the Lord right now. And God will forgive you. You can break the generational curse. I get tired of people saying, well, my, my, so many people in my family got blood, high blood pressure, sickle cell, uh, uh, whatever problem, eye problem, this problem. But we don't have to go out like that. We can pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to help us. And he will. 
He's a very present help in a time of trouble. But will you call on him? Will you trust in him? Praise the Lord. Will you, will you call on the Lord? Will you? Will you call on the Lord? Trust in the Lord. 